Welcome back to Close Up. Some independent voters like to complain there's no difference at the end of the day between Democrats and Republicans. But we have two gentlemen with us this morning who would beg to differ and are ready to show there is plenty of contrast on the ballot in 2020. Ray Buckley, chairman of the New Hampshire Democratic Party, and Steve Stepanek, chairman of the NHGOP. Thank you both for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you for having me, Adam. All right, let's start with the biggest news item from this last week. President Trump declining to commit to a peaceful transfer of power following the election. Chairman Stepanek, Governor Sununu called the president's comments, quote, very inappropriate. Do you agree? Uh, what I agree on is the fact that we need to make sure that all the votes are properly counted, number one, and, and that there's no monkeying around with it. Now, I don't anticipate anything like that happening in New Hampshire because we know how to do it, we know how to do it right. But I have some other states, especially states that are doing mail-in ballots, to just generally sending ballots out to anybody and not knowing who's going to be at the other receiving end of those ballots. So we have to make sure that it's done properly. And, and I'm sure that at the appropriate time, uh, that uh, uh, Vice President Biden will give his, uh, uh, his uh, speech, ultimately conceding the election. Uh, Chairman Buckley, what's your reaction? And if President Trump wins, are you committed to accepting that result and accepting a peaceful transition from one Trump term to another? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, th I think what's really important is to point out that the uh, sitting president of the United States is actually challenging whether or not uh, Americans' votes will be uh, considered legitimate. Uh, no, never in history has that happened before. Now, right here in New Hampshire, uh, where we have a long history of, of uh, our local elected officials making sure that every voter gets to vote and their votes are counted correctly, uh, we have a, a negligible uh, concern uh, are there. And so the real question is whether or not if you know, Chris Sununu and, and other Republicans in the state uh, will abide by the vote that happens in November, uh, or will their uh, affection for Donald Trump overwhelm uh, their sense of duty and loyalty to the people of New Hampshire? Hey, Chairman Stepanek, are there any plans in the works to make any kind of legal challenge to the election if it's close? Uh, obviously, New Hampshire has a process by which you can challenge anything, is and it's called recounts, and we know and, and uh, Ray Buckley knows as well that every single election that is close in the answer, whether it be a state election, state election, all on up, up. if it's close, we have a process in place here in the answer to allow for a recount, which is fair and equitable. I think it always has been. It's, it's been I, I've been doing this for 20 years, and for 20 years, there's always recounts. So I don't see any issue with that. And, and I, I take exception with what uh, Mr. Buckley said, saying that, in fact, uh, the governor would have any problems with the results of the election totals here in New Hampshire. I think New Hampshire knows how to do it right. We've always done it right. We have a system in place that is there, and we're going to do a wonderful job here in New Hampshire, and I have no concerns at all as far as election results in New Hampshire. All right, let's jump into some of the races right now. A very different approach to New Hampshire from the two presidential campaigns. Chairman Buckley, aren't you a little worried that there could be a replay of 2000 unfolding here where we saw Al Gore not pay as much attention to New Hampshire and then ultimately lose the state in the general election? Are any concerns about the fact that the Biden campaign is not prioritizing the Granite State? Uh, listen, the actions of Donald Trump and his administration, especially now with the Supreme Court, uh, has really put in doubt whether or not uh, the uh, tens of thousands of Granite Staters are going to continue to have health care with the potential uh, repeal of the uh, American Affordable Care Act uh, and women's reproductive rights. New Hampshire has a long history, a proud history of supporting women's uh, health uh, and the fact that uh, we're now being challenged here, uh, you know, whether or not that's going to continue to be true. And then here in New Hampshire, you've got uh, Chris Sunu once again following Donald Trump, holding out our chief justice uh, position uh, empty for over a year simply because he wants to impose uh, a anti-choice uh, zealot. So the people of New Hampshire uh, will be voting uh, for uh, both. Uh, I, I believe that they'll be voting for, for uh, both the vice president for Biden uh, and for Dan uh, Feltis for, for governor as well.
Chairman Stepanek, some contend that in this kind of pandemic year, the regular math doesn't necessarily apply. People might not want that in-person aspect. What's your take on that? Can this make a big difference, the split between the parties on how they're behaving? Uh, yes, but first I'd like to comment on, on what Mr. Buckley just said, and, and I find it outrageous that he said that the governor has in fact left that position open on the Supreme Court. He appointed a very qualified person to be Chief Justice, and in a very politicized move, which is the first time ever for the Executive Council, the Executive Council shot down his nominee and have, have made it clear that no nominee that the governor uh, presents to the executive council will they approve unless they can pick it. And that's just not the way it works. So I just want to put that on the record. As far as what you're saying, as far as how we're campaigning, when the governor lifted the stay-at-home order, he started doing traditional New Hampshire campaigning. And that had to do with all sorts of campaigning from digital to mail and person to person door. And quite frankly, we wear masks, we practice social distancing, but we go out and we're campaigning the New Hampshire way. And quite frankly, we have had an overwhelming positive response from all the people that we're communicating with. And we're going to continue to do it. And this is the way things are done in New Hampshire. We're doing it in a safe manner, and uh, we look forward to winning up and down the ballot come November 3rd. Chairman Stepanek, across the country, Republicans are playing defense on U.S. Senate races. Resources are being poured into defending incumbents where they are. In that kind of environment, it stands to reason that Corky Messner is going to have a pretty tough time unseating Gene Shaheen. What's your take on that? I think that Corky's well positioned to uh, take on Gene Shaheen, and quite frankly, uh, the, the concern that not only I have, but people across the state have, is the fact that Gene Shaheen spends all the time in D.C. We call her D.C. Gene Shaheen because the only time she comes back to New Hampshire is when it's election time, and otherwise she forgets to New Hampshire, she probably forgets how to get back here. So we're, we're working with a candidate who knows how to represent citizens of New Hampshire, not the swamp in Washington, D.C. And Chairman Buckley, even though it's not her name at the top of the ticket, it's safe to say Senator Jasheen is leading your ticket here in New Hampshire. Those primary numbers bear it out. So oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, Jean Jean has delivered for the people of New Hampshire uh, throughout her terms in the U.S. Senate and then during her terms as governor as well. People know her, they trust her, uh, and they are going to re-elect her. Uh, I think the, the people of New Hampshire are having difficulty actually taking Corky, uh, Colorado, Corky Mesmer even very seriously. And, and you see that out there on the streets that uh, people don't know who this guy is. He moved here last year. Um, he's under a fraud investigation for you know, some charitable operation he was he was operating out back in his home state of Colorado. Uh, he's just not somebody that the people of New Hampshire is going to uh, take as a serious candidate for the U.S. Senate. Chairman Buckley, one of the truisms of New Hampshire politics seems to be that it's very difficult to unseat a popular two-term incumbent governor. How does Dan Feltis create the spark that he's going to need to win in an upset? Well, I think that, you know, we've come very close. Uh, to defeating uh, Chris Noon, the Zeta Nunu in the previous two elections. Uh, I think we learned some lessons from that. And uh, as you'll see um, in the coming weeks and in uh, closing days of the election, uh, this race has been tightened up very quickly. Uh, and I, I absolutely believe that Dan Feltis uh, will be chosen as governor. There, so there is a history of people trying to run for a third term and being unsuccessful uh, with that. So um, we're going to actually point out uh, the reality that uh, Chris Nunez's real record versus the record that he likes to pretend that he has is uh, really a mini Donald Trump. Uh, and uh, he, his, his affection for uh, Donald Trump has, has infected his ability to govern. And an issue after issue, uh, it's the same uh, challenge, the same issue. It's the special interest. It's the people taking care of your own uh, and, you know, putting in danger women's 
about reproductive health, measuring the, the Affordable Care Act, and on and on. He just simply won't take on uh, Donald Trump. Uh, in fact, just mimics them. Uh, Chairman Stepanek, what's your response there? And what does this governor's race boil down to? It pocketbook issues, the pandemic? I believe it boils down to the pandemic and pocketbook issues, which, in fact, the governor has done a phenomenal job as far as handling the pandemic here in New Hampshire and keeping New Hampshire citizens safe and, more importantly, as importantly, keeping um, uh, New Hampshire business alive. Not only is this appealing to independents, not only is this appealing to Republicans, but in the primary, 4,800 Democrats wrote in the governor's name as far as uh, uh, the primary was concerned. So he's appealing right across the board to, to Republicans, to independents, and to Democrats. And uh, we didn't get quite to all the races here. I want to touch on one last topic, 30 seconds each here. Chairman Buckley, a lot of people think that the New Hampshire primary is in danger. Can you guys work together to ensure that First in the Nation remains first moving forward? Uh, New Hampshire I'm going to that. Oh, yeah, you're going to get that too, Chairman Stepanek, but let's let Chairman Buckley go first. Uh, the New Hampshire Democrats have always worked very closely uh, with the Republican Party. Uh, Steve Dupree uh, did an amazing job over the decades in making sure that uh, we retain our first in Asian, uh position and uh, by working with him and uh, also with uh, you know the other members of the leading uh, community here in New Hampshire. Uh, I know it's going to be a challenge. It's always a challenge every four years, but uh, we'll work together and make sure that, that uh, we have it uh, just in time for uh, uh, for Vice President Biden's re-election. Chairman Stepanek, you got about 20 seconds. Thank you so much. And, and I will agree that this is the one area that I will agree 100 percent with Ray Buckley and say that the New Hampshire Republican Party will work hand in glove with the New Hampshire Democratic Party to protect the first of the nation primary here in New Hampshire because this is where it belongs and this is where it will continue to be uh, for the for the future. All right, Chairman Stepanek, Chairman Buckley, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it today.